and is this the magic moment? Hello? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the same when you have a public appearance. Uh, yeah, no worries. Computer, the shop mat is always bugging uh, as, a file, as a final time. So, yeah. Sorry for that. And uh, hello, well, everyone. The, that's showbiz for you, Francois. That's showbiz for you. If um, if something can go wrong, it will go wrong. But thank you so much for joining. Um, then I would say, without any further ado, um, let's kick this off. Um, so, first of all, everyone, everyone listening to this, everyone joining on Discord Live, anyone listening to the recording, thank you so much. This is the Modular Clubhouse, and with today's special guest, we have a Francois from Chakmat Modular. Francois, first of all, thank you so much for joining. Um, thank you for the invitation. Yeah, well, it's 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 my pleasure. It's my honor to have you here. And um, yeah, as as as, as I just uh, told you as well. So what we're going to do uh, for those of you who've never been to one of these meets before, or for uh, those of you who've never listened to any of these recordings, what we'll do is we'll do a well a, a thirty minute informal interview. And uh, we'll then follow it up with open Q&A with the people who are attending here live. Um, so if you are listening to this live, you are able afterwards to raise your hand, join us on stage, ask your questions live if you want. If you're unwilling or incapable of, um, well, actually joining us on stage, but you do have a question, feel please feel free to just uh, jot your questions in the companion channel. Also use that to uh, share any links that you might want to share with us or the rest of the audience. And I'll make sure to, uh, well, <laughs> include as much as possible in the description for the uh, recording as well. Uh, well, that being said, as said, Francois, do apologize for the long introduction. So how have you been? How's today been? Uh, today was great. I was in the studio making music, so it's always a Oh, that's a great. Good day. <laughs> Any, anything in particular you can uh, elaborate a bit more on music wise or oh today i was in studio with um, a friend of mine which is called hugo you from his artist name and we have a collaboration since 10 years an ambient collaboration called pal bleu uh, which is a very french word uh, which is like more ambient music kind of a bit dark ambient uh, oh, and so great. we're recording an album yeah oh that's <laughs> great story. Yeah. But that's that's going to be um, and, and, and is that the first time you guys recorded an, uh, an actual album, or no, have you done that before? The second one, we, we, we did second, one and okay, then several digital EP, and we, we had an album released like in two thousand and twelve. Yeah, it's ten years ago, something like this. So how do you then spell spell that? Because of course, as I said, well, the oh, well, my, my French. So, so just to have the context, it, it's a it's a very odd name also for the French speakers. It's a, it's a very old, old, old uh, French word, um, which means uh, not the blue blood, yeah, mm -hmm. blue blood in French. It's, it's like the, the kings, the nobles, and yeah, this yeah. kind of thing. In, in the Middle Age, where where can where there was a. Uh, you, you you couldn't like uh, when something bad was happening to you, you couldn't like uh, treat God and say uh, uh, for God's sake or something. It's, it it was banned in in France, and so, mm -hmm. uh, the people started to realize also the sources of their unhappiness wasn't God, but was like the. Uh, the, the, the the boss of the of the country of the royalty, you know, and so they start mm -hmm. to, to 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 be to injure the the, the nobles and the, um, and the kings, and so not the pas le sang bleu means uh, it's insulting like the kings and this kind okay. of stuff. It's a very so, very old. So how, uh, how do you how do you how do you write it? Could you spell it for me? Oh, um, P A L S P A L S P A L S. Yeah, e yeah. E? M E L E U. Oh, uh, Palsen Bleu. Yes, Palsen Bleu. Um, well, I'm getting. Uh, I might be mistaken, but. Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, Palsen Bleu. And then, of course, if I look for ambient, I might find it. Oh, I can find something and just drop this. I, I, I think the album, the, the first record is not free. And um, uh, there's a mod. Yes. 
if you could just drop it in the companion channel then uh, yeah, i'll make yeah, sure yeah, yeah. to show it in the uh oh <laughs> there we go oh Let's there out, there man. you go perfect pulse and bleu oui monsieur mais bien sûr <laughs> well yeah I'm, I'm i'm always trying to uh to do a bit of french here and there because um even though i'll i'll never be able to well, speak french as good as a as a walloon but still um my uh, my paternal grandmother was uh, uh was belgian walloon so she always tried to make sure that we had at least some well uh, some sort of touch with french speak in belgium but then of course yeah that that that, that waters down during the time but uh, i've got it in right now so that thanks again so you've been recording your second album that's great and and, and how's that yeah working, when, when, like when can we mixing okay great and when, when can we actually uh expect that to uh to hit the um well, to hit places like oh, Bandcamp it's, and uh it's a great question it's uh being like uh we're going to, you know it's a, it's a musical process we've been uh, going to, to do a demo <clears throat> we have a few labels asking for something so we send it to labels and see what's happening so there is no um we, we both have a, well i have also a musical project where we're more proactive on it this one is more like okay let's redo music between friends because we really like to do it and uh let's see yeah. what happens so and uh, yeah, we did a first recording session and we said, yeah, we, we should go on and can keep making music together and release an album. So, so there is no like real deadline or rush or something. It's more like the pleasure to, mm -hmm. to continue working on music and uh, hopefully release something and tour after also. Oh, that's great. That's great. But still having that creative process happening, especially as you said, well, this is a this is a longtime friend of yours that you're working with. And that's always, yeah, that, that that's what you want, right? That's why, I, well, yeah, uh, like I said, I have a more uh, proactive um, uh, musical project was with mm -hmm. like a real deadline and so on. Um, I think both are important. And uh, well, one is for like more uh, field of research also for sound and this kind of stuff, especially in ambient and this kind of ambient because it's a, it's, it's mm -hmm. a, a huge work of sound design and this kind of... Uh, um, it's something that makes me work with modular scene, which is also very important for me uh, yeah. as being a, a manufacturer with Shackmat. Uh, it's it's making music give me ideas to make models, and the more the modular synthesizer I involve into music, the more I I, I get ideas and the, I, I get a way to it, yeah, it give me almost, uh, what I need. I know some people surely will need it also. So the more That's, I'm making music, yeah. the more I have ideas. Absolutely. Because then, of course, then, then you know what the need is. And once you've got the need, then you can actually start and develop a solution for that. Once you know and understand the pain, then you can bring a, well, a Band-Aid for that. But that, has, that, has that always been, been a part of you, making sure that you were able to make music? Um, how, how was your, your musical upbringing? Where, where did you come from, from, from a musical point of view? If we were to go back um, <clears throat> approximately, well... Uh, Tom already uh, spoiled the fun here. So if we go back 40 years in time and if we looked at young Francois, what kind of music were you exposed to? 40 years in time, almost day to day, I was just like a few days. Maybe. <laughs> um, so yeah. uh, let's say I started music uh, when, I, when I was 12, uh, doing a bit of keyboard. And um, I started bass to just go into a band with friends when I was a... Uh, in college, um, and uh, I was I really love playing bass, but it, it was kind of frustrating because you are not the guy who is composing in the band. So after that, ar around seventeen, I was playing in a metal hardcore band. It was pretty, you know, the, the metalcore scene was pretty huge in Belgium back back to those days. Oh yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I played uh, years in uh, in metalcore bands. Um, and at the same time, I started to get really interested into electronic music. I was really, I hated electronic music when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. um, and I started to discover with uh, AFX Twin or, uh, you know, all DJ Shadows, this kind of stuff, make me, oh, this is something interesting happening there. Because all I knew was um, a friend of mine coming from my village, listening to Thunderdome or, or to uh, Banzai Records, you know, those kind of very art techno. Uh, yeah. which no I like it, it, it is the most which no I like which no I more understand than I was a teenage but anyway I, I started to love electronic music in uh, in my early 20s 
and then I started to make electronic music. Yeah, at twenty three, twenty four, um, yeah. and uh, solo projects and duo. I I played a lot with different bands also. Um, no, as Shakmat is bigger, it's calmed down a lot. But like ten years ago, not, not maybe six, seven years ago, when I started Shakmat, I, I still had like seven musical uh, projects with which were active. <laughs> That's um, great. I know I only got uh, yeah three like for I could say I have a three project like right now. Yeah, but but if you if you go back even further, if you said okay, well your active participation in music started when you were twelve. Uh, but what kind of music was played um, when you were growing up? What kind of things did your uh, did you listen to at home? Oh, um, back when I was uh, like, like a child, and my yeah. first real big hit with uh, with an album was "Bad" from Michael Jackson, which I still love. Actually, it's like mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. something from your childhood that will never quit for your life. Um, and uh, then I, I really went into alternative rock and you know grunge music, metal, and then hardcore. Uh, so I have an older brother also listening a lot to. Uh, like Guns N' Roses, Metallica, you know, it was the 90s. I, I, Absolutely, I was, uh, yeah. Then in 92, so, uh, and I had a, a brother who was like 16 at that period, so all the all the big things from, from the, all the all, all the main hits from MTV in in rock and uh, metal and this kind of stuff. My brother was in it, so I was in it. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But you do hear that um, from a lot of people in. Um, well, in the DIY, in the maker sphere, but actually in the whole of Eurorack and modular in general, you do hear a lot of people coming from more of a uh, a metal or hardcore punk background. Um, is that something where you? How how would you describe that that evolution coming from from metal, hardcore punk, into well the electronic music that you came to embrace in your early twenties? Mm, for me, it was like kind of separate ways, like really things I, I, I wasn't going to to to, uh, to merge together. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I understand uh, it was more for the, for music making. It was more maybe more a bit technical. So while playing guitar, I started to really like processing my guitar, even if uh, in a metal hardcore bands. Um, yeah, uh, like doing some kind of of pad, uh, really. Uh, Heavy pad with, with a guitar with a lot of delay <laughs> reverb, you know, this kind of principle. Uh, playing also with strange object on a guitar, it, I, I was really amazed by that. So I was already searching for new sound. I, I think it's what, what get me into modular after. And so with a lot of pedal, I started also to study uh, sound engineering. Uh, I had a mixer at home. I started to make feedback and to to. Um, to, to make music finally with just uh, <laughs> electronic gear, but it was maybe gear that was supposed to go with a guitar. But I think a lot of coming from rock metal, uh, like the guitarist, I have this common thing to, to maybe add a crush with the pedal and then, okay, I, I understand what I can do with electronic stuff. Mm -hmm. Let no go with a, a synthesizer and maybe modular synthesizer is the closest things to Stonebox and to pedals and a, a classic uh, synthesizer with a keyboard. Absolutely, and that's also the thing that when you're a guitarist, you have a, a way to sing music, uh, which is completely uh, different from people learning keyboards. You know, there's a, yeah. there's a fact that when you're a guitarist, um, a guitar player, you you, you uh, it doesn't change anything if your key is like uh, E or F or a G. You just like um, translating your end on. on a, it's not that simple, but you, you know you know what I mean for. So there is something for a guitar player when you when you are in front of a keyboard you say oh it's so complicated why is this so complicated I mean guitar so there is mm -hmm. this very chromatic approach which is a bit different f for us I think it's in keyboard and maybe it's a reason also why guitar people jump also into synthesizer which does not have keyboard yeah Just yeah maybe. yeah because you can know. easily it's translate those those power chords that you that you play on guitar uh, that you can easily more easily get that into a modular synthesizer where you don't need to interact with with an actual keyboard uh, necessarily, you mean? Yeah, and when you feel you have to relearn music again, you, you already learn guitar and then you, if you want to go into keyboard and synthesizer, you should go, okay, again, I have to learn how to play with a keyboard, but I did it for years with a guitar. Why, why do I have to, to relearn everything and to change the way I'm seeing the notes and, and so on? 
Yeah. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. Absolutely. And, and how did that then all, well, once you started to embrace uh, playing around with your, uh, with, with, with your pedals, uh, starting to play around and investigating things like feedback. How did that then finally evolve into actually getting your hands on a on a, on a synthesizer? Um, it was. Um, I have a modular synthesizer since two thousand and three or four, something. No, two thousand four. Yeah. And uh, back at this period, there was a Belgian brand which is called La Sens, uh, which made uh, a synthesizer called Venturi, which is a very rare, like, like there is 20, 30, it's, it's a 5U small suitcase. Uh, maybe I, if I can find the link, I will, I will put it in, 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 the, in the chat. Um, and it's a very rare synthesizer. I still have it. Uh, it's very harsh, noisy um, synthesizer. Mm -hmm. Um, is that really? Oh, there is a matrix synth. Synth. Think about it. Okay, well, I will post it so you, you can see what it is. And um, yeah, in all that process, I um, I uh, I started to uh, uh, yeah. I, I met the guy and I was really amazed what was what, what was what doing with a friend of mine. We bought one Venturi. Uh, that finally, yeah, I I finally acquired until if. For me, and um, yeah, I mix it with the pedal with the feedback, it was a great sound for that. And uh, like five years after, it was like, okay, you were like this, maybe there is more choice and there is thing, more precise thing I can do. So it was back in the days when Make Noise just started and uh, uh, Harvest Man, you know, when there was just like a few brands that uh, yeah. started to, to make models, and um. Short story: I had a certain of time a <laughs> musical project that that ended that ended, and uh, I had money to get back from this, and I finally had the money to say, okay, no, I can just imagine a full system like a nine U dupe first system and buy it, and not just try to buy one model one by one. And uh, the offer was already very great at the moment, and then yeah. I plunged into Euro at this moment. And 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 so you immediately went from guitar and pedals immediately into. This, this this modular approach with the La Sans uh, Venturi and then immediately into uh, Eurorack. No no steps in between. No, no, no. It, it was like maybe a process of 10 years, like from my 20s to my 30s, between being the first time making feedback with pedal until Great. Uh, being in Eurorack. But I was already playing music live with different machines and it was a setup, I don't know, with a mixer. Uh, like, like a drum machine, uh, the Lassons Venturis, uh, uh, different uh, pedals, and, um, and and I keep this approach. Still, no, I'm playing with pedals in live. I still love uh, absolutely the, the ergonomic side of the pedal with big knobs and big switches when you have to to, to start the, the effect of something like this. Absolutely, I can imagine. I can imagine. But how how did that then evolve into actually saying well? what uh, the, the the people like make noise harvester and, and those kind of people can do i can do that as well so how did you, did you actually came up with the idea to say well let's start and make some of my my own so when i started to buy euro like very quickly i i said oh there is something very interesting for live uh music because you can really do your ergonomy of the instrument you want the way you want yeah, uh, which is still something I feel very great with uh, with Euro. Like uh, I'm totally okay with people redoing classic stuff, or, or like uh, for example, for uh, playing live, I have a, a seven new uh, suitcase with a lot of different models, but it's basically a groove box, and maybe I could do it with a. Uh, this bass line plus this synthesizer plus this machine, and uh, there is not very. Um, complicated patch involved in it, but uh, it's it just the fact that I can concentrate so many tracks and, and tracks I can imagine the, the way I want inside a small machine. So I, I'm still finding you reckon that what attracts me very early um, with uh, to, to have a Eurorack synthesizer to play uh, to play live is that you can have your own ergonomy with with, with, um, with a machine. And uh, while playing live, I really quickly felt I missed uh, a CV gate recorder, a stepped CV gate recorder. And actually, I have a background of a civil engineer in, in electronics, and uh, I said, yeah, but actually, I can do it. It's, it's not that complicated to, to start to make a model. <laughs> um, so I had a few things to learn. I, I made a first 
a very raw prototype at the time. Uh, and it was just for me to play live. So some people saw it, uh, say, hey, what's this strange model you get in your car? Something I did myself, but what is it doing? Oh, it's a step CV recorder. So I show, I have a Nunchuk Adak back at this time to record the movement with a Nunchuk and, and, and this kind of thing. Um, and a few people started to see it, found it awesome. One of the guys asked me for one and I also did a video of some sort of a musical track where the model was, was in it. And uh, there were some people from the net saying, hey, this is awesome. I want one. <laughs> hey, Maybe a few people on Earth want the same thing. Okay, let, let's let's try to do it. So with a friend of mine, Steve, who is still in Shackmat with me right now, uh, we said, okay, let's try to industrialize the product because I never had this experience when I study engineering and this kind of stuff. So just yeah. let's try for fun to do a brand. We will do 20 of one model. And that's it. It will be the fun and we, have, we will have the story after for all uh, children and so on. But we, we did 20 modules and because we promoted it, there were some people who said, oh, well, what it is? Like, no, it looks professional. So shops contacted <laughs> me and the first shop, uh, which was Schneider, and then there was a shop in the US that contacted me also. And with, I think in two weeks, we orders came from like 20 and that's it to 150, something like oh, this. Wow. It was like pretty crazy for us and we didn't expect that so and which module you know, was this by the way bishop miscellany is the very first one which yeah, is yeah. Discon- and um at that time we when we did the 150 it was like okay we spent some time module is still selling a bit because of the shops keep on contacting contacting us and and i did a few other prototypes of things and say yeah maybe it was a case to try the night gallop now so we did the night gallop and the night gallop went really well. And so we started to say, okay, actually, a lot of IDs can be quite cool and we can do it because if we have IDs, it's still, we're not losing money by doing it. For, we're just uh, making modules. It's fun. It's, uh, I, I'm learning a lot of stuff. And, and yeah, it started that way. And uh, years after, um, it looks more like a regular company and uh, we, we have no more uh, professional approach to... Uh, the fact that we're gonna develop this module and we know we can uh, hire some people who do it ourselves to develop the module and we know the kind of budget we can have we have um, yeah we, we have more perspective uh, right now with the, yeah. the kind of uh, uh, not business model but the way we we think we can do things absolutely that's great of course and just maybe uh, a quick question before others uh, ask it as well so why did you discontinue the uh, the bishop miscellany and the um uh what was it the uh, uh the white gallop oh, I know. the bishop miscellany we discontinued it because it was made in a very uh, rough way based on what was modular seven years ago so, um, like for example, um, the fact that it wasn't tracking really well volt octave, okay, never bothered anyone years ago. But in the last year, standards get much higher, or standards also get much higher, and we found it was a bit unacceptable to have a model that cannot uh, record and like track volt, o- volt octave very well. We also felt that there is much more we can do with a bishop, and actually we're developing a MK2 version. Oh wow! Because we wanted to have the um, same look and same um, standard as what we have in uh, what we call the control module. So it's a, all the module with the big buttons looking like electron buttons, so which are the four weeks rules, the Arlequin's context, the night gallop, and the clock upon. We did the wide gallop also, uh, which was a limited edition. It was announced as a limited edition of the night gallop because uh, we. F- we had a lot of algorithm to put into the night gallop. We created a lot of different algorithm and we just selected the five more interesting for us. But still there were some people who asked us for some kind of algorithm and this kind of thing. So we yeah. finally said, oh, let's, let's do a limited edition for those people on 150 wide gallop and that's it. And we will just do those one and it will be over after. Um, if we have to release an MK2 night gallop, we will incorporate all the all the tables in it 
Well, you heard it here first, people. Um, maybe we'll see a, a V2 of bishops and maybe even a V2 of gallop. So that's that's always great to hear. Gallop, I'm not sure. Uh, bishop, we are on it. We are, oh, uh, wow. For, Perfect. And we are, it's a very early stage, so it's not a plan also for this super boost to announce uh, Bishop MK2, but we are on it and um, we have um, some very cool ideas to bring the principle of we have in the, in the first Bishop Missani, like really further. Oh, wow. I'm really looking forward to that then. Um, and then, of course, one of the other questions that uh, I already see popping up in the companion channel as well is. Um, the whole name Shakmat, which is of course uh, I, I've read, it's, it's of course part of Schakmat in Dutch. Um, so how did that come to be uh, your name and, and your your brand, so to say? Mm, it's a yeah, it's it's a bit randomish. Uh, so it's back in the days when I start, I made the Bishop Miscellany. I, I was touring a lot with a project, solo project called Bishop Dust. And so when I did the first module, um, so a miscellany is like a book when, where priest and bishop notes a song and this kind of stuff. So it was like, yeah. it makes sense for something that records patterns, the, 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 the small book where a priest was mm -hmm. nothing. I chose bishop because um, I have this musical project, which was also a bit about chess in the, in, in the visual aspect of things. Yeah. Um, and so when I also really just, I read a lot of things about chess and uh, the origin of chess, just to be able to communicate and add information uh, to, to to create a universe around the Bishop this project. And uh, I, I I just watch Shakmat, which I found really cool. You have to know that uh, Shakmat in in French doesn't mean anything. Yeah, it just sounds like a cool word. And when you think about it. It sounds like chessmate, which is very similar to échec et mat in French, but you have to think a lot about it. Oh, wow, yeah. But what's interesting <laughs> is, is, the, is, is the meaning of shakmat. Um, so it's an old uh, word from uh, uh, the Persian area, I think. Uh, Whether well, there is Iran now, so yeah, the Persian. Um, and, uh, you know, in uh, Iran, you have the Shah, which is like the king of Iran. Mm -hmm. And uh, mat means dead. So literally, yeah. Shakman means the king is dead. Yeah. So something that we remember, when I was talking of Palsan Bleu just before, which is like, I don't have the blue blood, which means... Uh, yeah, uh, which, uh, and, that, and you still use the name Bishop Dust within Palsan Bleu. At least that's what I can find on the, on Bandcamp even. Oh uh, yeah, it's, I think because on the Bandcamp, it's uh, it's from 10 years ago. Yeah, exactly. Ah, of but, course, yeah. Um, I don't play with the name Bishop Dust right now. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it at this period because uh, the two of us, Yuktur and Bishop Dust, had the solo career and uh, more for dance music, uh, for club music, let's say that. And uh, we, to promote, you know, we found it, it helped to say, hey, it's those two guys making ambience. That's why we, we, we push the name. But actually, right now, we should change because the, the project, are, my project, solo project, this solo project is over. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we found the, nom the name cool and we f found also that chess was a, a, a quite nice playground to, to for, for, for a brand just because you have already some um, names which are in, uh, installed there is some uh, yeah. there, there was something to very easy to, to take when, when, when we when we saw it, we would just release a few models it was really easy to say, okay we will do the rooks we'll do the knight we'll do maybe the king and and yeah, to actually, we were just making one models when we choose the name of the brand. So there was not this perspective also to, yeah, but there is, if we're making 15 models, there is not <laughs> enough space to, to name the models. So that's why now we call all the models with a, a name that we, we could find that could fit into a, an imaginary chess game. Like the Bard could be for me a, a piece. Uh, uh, like like a piece of chess uh, in in mm -hmm. an imaginary chess game. Like the wizard actually is a real chess piece in a, a alternate alternate chess or something like that. An alternative uh, yeah. chess game. Yeah, so uh, Arlequins, yeah. I think I know it's a jester, but Arlequins was the, was good from the jester, yeah. which is also. But you in indeed a, evolved from the well the classic chess game into more of this almost medieval. Um, uh, high court uh, approaches where you had Barts and you had Harlequins and you had Aeolus and all of that as well where it all fits within the same theme of course 
Yeah, it's kind of old, um, on middle age, old, not really middle age, but uh, uh, it's something a bit um, oldish. Uh, but uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's, it's 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 very. Uh, we know when a, a, a model name is a Shackmat model name when Absolutely. everyone at the HQ say, "Yeah, this one is cool. This one, yep. this one fits the Shackmat." way we have to, to call the module and uh, after years maybe we regret it because it's, it leads to some kind of complicated names but yeah. i think ourselves and different peoples uh when they're contacting us have a very short nickname like the time wizard is a wizard um i don't know the four bricks rook is a rook and uh you know this kind of idea harlequin's context is the harlequin and uh, yeah and uh, i think i think you get the idea yeah, absolutely. But that, that's something that you want to um, take forward as well to make sure that that's immediately recognizable as being a Shakmat module. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. And maybe to reply, because we are uh, talking about it, I, I see two questions on, on the chat. Yeah. Um, chess is a good pastime for you or, or, or fun? Uh, chess is a good pastime. And uh, Disclaimer, I, I'm, I think I'm pretty bad at chess, but I <laughs> really love playing chess with friends, uh, even if I'm losing uh, quite often. Uh, it, it's something I really love. Like, and we, so we, we don't play with a clock, so we, we can think each of us like a very long time about what we are doing, and maybe it can last hours just for <laughs> one part, and we're just talking sometimes, making a break, and so on. But yeah, it's something I, I really, really enjoy playing. Um, and uh, some utility models called Pawn. Yeah, we had the idea when we started the Clock of Pawn and finally we did not release another Pawn model. We had another design which, which was finally not to release. Uh, so we stopped and when we released the 2HP just after that, it was a bit too late to say, okay, all the utility models should be called Pawn. Because yeah, some different IPAs are, I think, utility models, and obviously <laughs> they're not called pawn. <laughs> or just um, well, as well, the other thought would have been if you called all of your one U modules pawns as well, but those are already well, gr those already have great names, of course. Um, there was already names. We found the Time Apprentice was so similar to the Time Wizard that the name had to be like uh, yeah. really related to the Time Wizard. Um, Tessitura Taylor came very so came very fast, and we found the name very great. So we said, yeah, it's it's sometimes it's a, it's a real struggle to find the name. Like the two last models, uh, the Mod Medusa and the Banshee set, we we announced the last Super Boost. Uh, we had like uh, it was until the deadline we, we we were hesitating on the names, and it was really uh, uh, like, like I think three days before I, we didn't have any real name and we said yeah it's cool and uh, and even the banshee said to be honest i'm not uh, it's not the, the the nicest name we found for a module mm -hmm. but that's still to be released right that's still to be released so maybe um uh, i want a few explanation uh, why we are so slow to release module why the bad quarter took so much time to be released so mm -hmm. Um, we know uh, into a very weird period for people making electronics as oh, many yeah. of you with know, all the shortages is... going on yeah yeah and so um, we always have a, a stock in advance with Shackmat uh, and uh, at first we looked at the ship shortage too yeah if it's one year we'll go through that we have the stock we need and it will be okay but we really felt at a certain times that it, it wouldn't be one year simply. So all the stock we had, we could keep for uh, models uh, we already released. We said, okay, let's keep it. And let's now develop what's available on the market for the new model. So we already developed as a mod made user for the, the Super Boost. And just one month after the Super Boost, we decided to, uh, yeah, maybe a bit more like uh, during the summer, we decided, no, actually we have completely to change the hardware in it, otherwise we will be limited because the same CPU, the CPU we were using first, we're using, for example, also in the Arlequin's context, with so the old seeds, uh, you cannot find them anymore at a very crazy price. Yeah. So we had to change and we had to uh, uh, be sure also to, when we start the first production, to have enough components to launch several production 
for the next year and maybe we continue to <laughs> in two years time yeah uh, so we decided at the end of the year also to buy a lot of components and to and to uh, to, to to reinvent all the models with available yeah. components we could buy in some hundred or thousand of items yeah. so it, it means that we had for some models to redesign everything um, so for the bar, it was a case. Um, plus, we also decided with uh, Thong to design custom buttons. We have uh, we have in the in this model, and uh, when we decided this was just the beginning of COVID, and it went crazy because the factories closed, and uh, yeah, there was a lot, lot, lot of problems due 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 to that. Yeah. Um, and for the Banshee set, if it's late, it's because we're rechanging the. Um, uh, user interface, um, and uh, we have some uh, beta tester and some comment after Superboost, and we really felt there was something that needed to be pushed for uh, even for a small analog VCU like this. Uh, so I don't have any panel to show right now, uh, but what we did basically is to put a digital interface on an analog VCU. Oh, nice. Meaning you can lock your course potentiometer, it can become, become an octave switcher. So you don't have this problem you have with analog VCO to, uh, by mistake, uh, just touch a bit your course knob and it go completely out of tune. Mm -hmm. um, we also change the UI to have access digitally to a more long mod a lot more functions uh, that normally you had with jumpers before. And so same thing, it's a development that needs all components. So we have to be sure that when we stop uh, design that we can buy this day, a lot of components. Uh, and yeah. um, it's, it's, uh, it's some, for some for some components, I know even if I see like a thousand in a shop somewhere, the day after it can be zero. So it's Absolutely. really something yeah. that have to be really quick and can be really stressful. Uh, because you start a development, you start a new development with new hardware, and uh, during the few weeks you're doing this, even if you're rushing, you don't know what the component you choose because the available will be in stock in yeah. three weeks after. Yeah. That. So, and, yes, and that's of course something that the whole the whole the whole industry is is struggling with, of course. And that's something I think that the for, to, at least from what I've heard from the audience is that everyone is very well well understanding of that, and. Um, just a quick question then on the on the Medusa, as that is of course a bit more of a a real digital module. Do you see that happening anywhere this year as well, or is that also something that's going to be pushed on the on the longer uh, on the longer ride as well? So for the Mod Medusa, we have components to produce a lot, lot of Mod Medusa. Uh, we just uh, today I wasn't at the HQ, but I I know our programmer mission today was to transfer the code from one platform to the other. Oh, um, nice. Meaning, um, I think um, two days I have a meeting with him, meaning it can, start, it can mean the start of the uh, oh, wow. last few measurements um, and just to adjust some uh, value of resistors or capacitors, this kind of thing, which take, which can be really quick. And then we order, I think we should start ordering, if everything goes well with the readaptation of the code, I, I think uh, mon next Monday we're going to start uh, <laughs> documents for the production. Oh, wow, that would be fantastic. Absolutely. I think a lot of people are really looking forward to that. We really most models available uh, at Superboost time, like the Banshee and the, and the Mon Medusa. And the good thing yeah. also is it's, um, for the next models we will announce at Superboost, uh, the, the the hardware is already bought, so we won't have oh, this problem great. with what's happening next year for Shackmat and the new the new release after. Oh, I think everyone's really looking forward to that. So let's have a, have a quick look at what uh, what we currently do have uh, available to everyone. Uh, that's of course the the Bart Quartet. How has that has how has that been been received? Because personally, I've been intrigued by that. I haven't uh, really had my hands on it, but. How has that been received? What was the initial feedback? How is that now rolling out uh, globally? Are you talking the Bard? Because it was a small the bar, Bard quart, Quartet, yeah. Bard Quartet, um, it's been really well received. Um, we're pretty confident because it was uh, there was a, was a lot of beta testing on it. And um, we had the same feedback like it can do a lot. So we were afraid that the the UE would be complicated. That's that mm -hmm. what the beta tester told me. Uh, but when you put your hand on it, like 
I think 75% of the features you access them without even reading the manual because it's really, it's really uh, intuitive. You might say even. Yeah, it's very, it's kind of yeah, it's very intuitive. We know with a uh, like the four bricks, the Arlequins are a bit more complicated model with shortcut and this kind of stuff that we really need if you want to keep model with a high density of function in a small HP. Uh, we prefer to go with uh, this kind of shortcut as in uh, to go with a huge screen and encoder, for example. So we try to to keep it uh, the more playable we can. Um, and uh, now we learn a bit of that also, and we, we, we felt that for the quantizer, we could do something quite simple, actually, because there is finally not so many functions, but there is, I think, just the right functions to, to make a, a very uh, flexible quantizer. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and the bard have been selling really quick. Um, I, I see on the, on the chat. Uh, yes, it's been selling really quick. Uh, there is a last batch coming from the first production in February, uh, which is already sold out to oh, retailers. Wow. <laughs> but we already bought all the components we need to reproduce more of what we already produce right now. So there, there will be more bard for sure uh, during, uh, I think, spring. Uh, around Super Bowls also, we should release, uh, we should have more bar to, to, to sell. Okay. <laughs> That's great. So Kyle, you know, you need to make sure that you uh, uh, buy in bulk, order in bulk uh, with uh, Signal Sounds uh, over at Chakmat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm truly, uh, I'm truly amazed to see how your, your brand, your name, how that has been embraced as being one of the staples of Eurorack. Um, even though, well, you, you might say, okay, you have a very, well, let's say a very focused approach to model, uh, to module design, even. And even though everyone knows Shakmat, everyone knows uh, uh, at least one or two of your modules. So what do you think that really sets you apart as a company from all of the other companies that, that are out there? And he ha might have even been around uh, for as long as you've been. Um, I think what uh, from yeah, an outside view, like for, I, I think what put us apart is um, it what I explained a bit earlier is that um, um, models I'm making come from the fact I made a lot of music. Uh, for I think for ten years I, I just did studio and sound engineering in clubs. You know, it was mm -hmm. just my regular life, every day doing music in studio, ten hours a day in this guy. Yeah, the, yeah, the, uh, this is this amount of time. Um, and and I think it's still the fact that uh, we play we playing music. We have a beta tester and a crew in Brussels. There is a lot of musicians also in Brussels using modular synths, like people with a um, very long musical background playing those instruments. So they also have ideas. They also know uh, this machine, this pedal, how it works, maybe or it should be incorporated into your Eurorack environment. And um, we have something focused on uh, I think on, on performance and on the. Um, uh, yeah, maybe we try to find the smart functions that like fix some things that normally you do with a lot of modules. And uh, yeah, again, all the ideas come from the fact we're all making music and uh, yeah. and while making music, yeah, for this kind of music, we need this kind of module, but it really doesn't exist, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's um, the idea. Or, or for example, the iPads come from the fact that. Uh, uh, I and some other people around me say, yeah, I would just like to clean uh, what's happening below 100 Hertz. So we can do a very small model. So when you have a multi-track uh, Eurorack, you need a lot of uh, things to just remove the rumble of your signal or, or, or like the very low, um, the very low spectrum. Yeah. Uh, so it's the fact that we apply uh, the use of models, I think that leads, uh, that leads to have uh, ideas to make models. Mm -hmm. So again, as you said, where, where you truly start from what a musician would actually need and the pain that a musician might actually feel currently that they cannot fix with without going out and about and combining a plethora of modules uh, by where you say, well, we want to have something that's very playable, but very music and musician uh, featured uh, modules, essentially, where you 
start from their pain and then start to develop a solution instead of this is functionality that I want and I want to incorporate that into a module. So not feature focused, but more solution focused. Yes. And then we add features because also we know that an ID can just fix one problem, which mm -hmm. is uh, the problem I have to make my music. But starting from the idea of a, of a certain concept, for example, yeah, yeah. Um, we can expand it to, yeah, but what about the people making this kind of music? What, what about uh, this kind of patch? And we can extend the ID to, to um, if we were on like one or two applications at the beginning, to, okay, with this kind of module, with maybe this function, with it, yeah. we can just like duplicate the number of applications we have. And um, and it's so we can grow. And it's also we 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 like to have layers in the in the module. So um, layers like you have in the night gallop is a good example where you have different tables and then you have different algorithm to 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 uh, to process the tables. Meaning with five kind of uh, tables and five kind of algorithm, you have a mm -hmm. lot of different combination between the two. It's the same also with the time wizard. We have also switches that can lead also to like 81 different configuration of the clocking of the model. Um, and it's just superposing stuff together, simple stuff together, which lead to have mm -hmm. more choice and the more application possible for a module. Yeah. So that, that does um, well chime in a bit of the easy to learn, difficult to master approach where everyone can take on one of these modules, but to truly bring it to its extremes, it's going to take a while. Yeah, and we try to do, um, it's, it's something I, I really hate to say because it's a bit, uh, it's a bit common, but um, it's, it's, it's simple and deep, maybe it's, it's uh, what yeah. we also try to do. So uh, I find that the Arlequin's complex, it's, uh, it can be, uh, uh, you need a bit of time to get used to it and to be able to work with it. I get it, but still, it's very easy to do what the first application of the model was, meaning mm -hmm. do simply scenes of fixed offset, store them, and then recall them. It's something that yeah. needs like three minutes to learn. It's the same thing with the four weeks rule, where you can go really deep and, and start to create your own tables, to autofill your patterns, and this kind of thing. But still, it's very easy to define a pattern length and yeah. then play with the pad and have a bit going on, quantize, and quantize. It takes like a few minutes to, to yeah. be into the model and to be able to, able to do that. Yeah. Uh, it's the same with the Gemini when you can very easily do a pump. But if yeah. you want to have like separate mono channel with precise stuff with a CV assigned to that, you can do it. But when you start a model like this, it's not very complicated to do the first main purpose of the model. Then you yeah. can open the box and start to have more complicated yeah. things that can maybe lead to your to your patch. Yeah. Well, and and, and I, I I can I can wholeheartedly agree specifically on the the Harlequins context and the the Gemini's of course, as those are the two uh, modules that I've been uh, luckily enough able to to uh, to work with, and those are indeed very intuitive. And if you then dive deeper, then you start to unravel even more value for the module that you might have just bought because of the intuitive approach that you saw at first, and then you can unravel even more value from that so that's great so what would be next for for um, i'm pretty i totally understand you might not want to spoil any of the surprises you want to uh, uh showcase at uh, at superbooth but could you at least or well, give us a glimpse of what you guys are working on um we're working on on um, several projects right now uh it's very hard to say um there is one project which will which will be sure at super boost which is yeah. a, a modulation model but I, I, I won't say more uh maybe more not utility but very i think practical for a lot of people uh feature and sized um, uh, aspect of things uh, put side by side i think it's interesting um we are uh, also working on two other bigger modules, um, so maybe it's time to say uh, also hello to to the Shackmat team and to present a bit everyone, if it makes sense with the model, because we have uh, uh, Guillaume, who is an analog designer. Um, he designed the dual dagger, is on the analog side of the 
uh, Banshee sets, so the, the analog VCO we're releasing. Yeah. Um, we have uh, Leonard who is doing uh, embedded electronics programmation. So um, he did the bad quartet and the clock upon. Uh, I was in charge of the other modules, uh, but no, is in bigger model, let's say a sound source. One sure thing is uh, uh, we will have more sound source coming on uh, in the next few months and years. It's one of our main focus, I think, for sequencing and modulation. Great. We start to have a full lineup. Uh, so we will be focused, we try to be you know, more focused on sound uh, generation and sound uh, processing. Um, what we would like to have uh, in the very near future, it's to have a complete analog voice. So I know nice. we have visual dagger as a filter, but it, for me it's more like a uh, processing filter for live application, even if you can do very cool stuff with a stereo and so on, it's still uh, not a real uh, synthesis filter. It needs, uh, it, 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 yeah, there is some lack of, uh, I don't know, attenuators of this kind of thing, for example. So we're working on uh, something to complete with uh, the, the, the VCOs to have a full analog voice. We have uh, two models in mind that we are working on right now, and we are working on a uh, digital sound source, but wow. it will come when it will come, and uh, maybe not super boost because it's, uh, it's a bigger uh, project, and uh, we really don't know where it will lead uh, until May, but uh, mm -hmm. cross the finger to have three models at super boost, but nothing sure. That would be fantastic. It would be cool. <laughs> because yeah as you said super booth is only well uh let me just check the actual dates so super booth is only three and a half months away from now so yeah i totally yes. understand that that's uh, that that might be a um a, a time pressure you're not uh, too keen on um no perfect so um We've already been talking for quite a while, uh, Francois, and I do have to uh, yes. apologize for taking a bit longer. Um, but oh. I, I still just have two two questions for you. And then then I want to uh, hand it over to the uh, the rest of the crowd here that has been gathering in large amounts, I might say. Um, so my penultimate question would be, is if you were to go back to that 12-year-old boy that was just starting to play bass... Uh, what would be your one piece of advice to to him? Um, hmm. <laughs> this is a very great question, dude. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a very good question. Um, huh. What would I say to him? Uh, seriously, I, I'm I'm quite happy with so. What I did, I, I mean, yeah, I mm -hmm. have some regret like everyone, but uh, I put everything in a balance. It's, it's, yeah, it's okay. Maybe trust more what you can do. Uh, be more confident on the fact that what you can do is a uh, is can be can be serious, and even mm -hmm. if it looks uh, uh, sleepy, because I was maybe more intended to become a technical guy or. Um, Oh, yeah, may, maybe if I was more intended when I was a teenager to, 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 if my parents, my family saw me like someone who would become an engineer working in a regular industry and this kind of thing, I, it was maybe a bit of a struggle I had in my life was to say, yeah, maybe also I can do mm -hmm. music and make my living with music and like trusting what, what, what I really like. And what I would say to him is just like, yeah, trust. But don't doubt because I doubt obviously I, I don't mm -hmm. it was like normal because I was a lot of people saying yeah you're sure you're doing the right thing by doing music and you work stuff and uh, yeah I was playing hardcore and making experimental electronic music so <laughs> I can yeah. imagine like more and certain time you know, were a bit freaking out with, with everything and also really happy with it. <laughs> but, uh, at a certain time it's, it's, I remember them coming and seeing me live with very, very weird project it was it were like touring and everything but I was like, yeah, what are you doing in your life? But, I mean, you're happy, so it's, 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 they get it. It's, it's, but I know, I know they really get it, saying, okay, you, it's, it's, it's logical. No, you, you did this technical things, the music, and now you're into making an electronic uh, instrument, and it seems to go well. So mm -hmm. uh, I would say to the 12-year-olds, Francois, uh, just do it and don't doubt. Just never adopt. Just go for it. Go for it, and it, everything will be all right. 
Because I, I know, um, you know, when you have this kind of doubt, you, you sometimes think, yeah, maybe I will not uh, have any money or, you know, mm -hmm. be, sometimes being a musician, uh, is, is a choice of being a musician can be hard, mainly when you have a, a diploma, like being an engineer, when you can like have a really good job very easily. Uh, you have dope, like, uh, am I not like uh, uh, yeah. destroying what I built earlier, like going to university and studying all that shit. Um, and no, I'm really happy. I, di I did everything. And I would say to the Francois, the destroyer of Francois, yes, go for it. But don't have dope. <laughs> <laughs> Treble. No, but that, that I, I think that that's something that that's a great piece of advice for every 12 year old Francois out there where you say well on the one hand make sure you don't doubt your own capabilities um, that you do have a way to follow your dreams uh, but always to a certain point where you might might say okay well you do need to be able to jump into the deep end first and see what happens and take a chance. And I think that that's great advice, not just for a 12 year old Francoise, but I think that that's great advice for everyone all around, if you uh, if you don't mind. Yes, for sure. Well, one day a friend of mine told me also, uh, because I was hesitating on getting a job and doing something else and blah, blah, blah. I said, yeah, but dude, you, you have enough resources and you're wise enough to never get into a deep shit. And if you are aware that yourself, you're able to of that, that, that security uh, net, you know, that mm -hmm. always say, okay, maybe things are going too far. Maybe I should like uh, find a way to, to, to find a solution. I don't know to, for the problem I have. And you know, you can always do it. Yeah. Uh, and you have resources in us to do it. Uh, you have to try things and you have to try. You, I think you can go, you, you have to remove the dope for certain times and say okay i will have doped when maybe things will get messier and i will I, I, always be able to say i can go from this situation if i if it's not going well or something it can be financially or you know a lot of things uh but say yeah maybe, maybe it's a it, it, it's a great advice make sure you can always go out from the situation if you want to put yourself in danger while trying things into your life mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's of course something where we and by we i mean us in in western europe where we might be able to do that more quickly because we do have the um well the social security to uh, to support us if anything goes wrong of course yeah of course and um yeah yeah and then in belgium and i think we have a quite uh good social security here yeah. which helps a lot also to to sometimes say okay let's stop everything and let's i will have less money but more time to try stuff and to yeah yeah for sure and it helps a lot for the artistic uh, absolutely yeah, uh, yeah. Or for the artist over here absolutely uh, no but but great philosophical <laughs> answers there francois so then it's time for yeah, me it's to getting uh, a bit philosophical. yeah absolutely <laughs> yes. well as i sh well typically well and that that's that's the beauty of what i like about these um, these interviews that I do, they these can go on all kinds of tangents. Whether we are talking about um, recipes, uh, philosophy, uh, physics, anything you might like, even um, uh, DevOps best practices or anything like that, we can we can talk about anything here. Um, but my last question for you is: I've I've been able to well to pick your brain for. Um, well, not just for uh, this show, but also for the for the year or so ever since we uh, gotten to know each other. Uh, but I do want to give you the opportunity as well. Do you have any sort of question or questions for me? For you? Yeah, could yeah. be. Well, yeah, 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 sure. I want to return sure. the favor. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure, sure. Um, I would say it properly in English. Um, um, what leads you to start a modular clubhouse? Um, for me, it was on the one hand, it was COVID. It was a an outlet for my creativity. Um, it was a it was a way for me to structure a lot of things that I wanted to develop further in my in my personal and in my professional life 
and I, I might have told this story a couple of times now, but um, this started uh, just over a year ago. I think it was December uh, 2020 when I bought my first my first synthesizer was an NTS one, and well, a couple, uh, a couple of weeks later, I I said, okay, well, now I want to take the plunge into into Eurorack. Uh, but the story before that was, of course, I, I, I've got a I've got a day job, uh, which I'm very happy with, which I can um, put in a lot of my creativity. Uh, but then, of course, during COVID, I, I was able to do a lot of things really well. I was able to do a lot and I was able to, uh, to, 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 to plan my own time. I didn't have to travel as much because I used to just travel across the globe. Uh, on a well, not a weekly basis, but on a monthly basis, and I needed something to really let my creativity loose because I was always into music. I've been into heavy metal bands. I've played in in in, in hardcore bands. I've done all of those things, uh, but I've never had the time again. So I was looking for for something that I could truly let my creativity go into. But I don't have any sort of musical um background as in uh, i wasn't trained classically I, I can't read notes nothing like that but then i got into synthesizers and i'm like well hey well this is something i can play with this is something i can truly invest time energy and all of that creative juices that i've got into and then i want to say well i want to dive into your rack but then i said but i do want to structure that and the structure that i wanted to do is I wanted to embrace my knowledge gap, so to say, well, I didn't know anything about synthesizers, I didn't know anything about Eurorack, I didn't know anything about modular, I didn't know anything about music theory. So then I said, I'm going to start a, uh, a series of interviews with people who truly know what we're talking about. And initially we started on Clubhouse, which is now only dominated by NFT slinging, um uh pyramid scheming um multi-level marketing self-made millionaires probably and i then moved it to discord but i also wanted to document my journey on youtube uh based on the videos that i do uh whether it's a an introduction to a module that i've uh just uncovered or something new that i've learned make sure that we guide others that are just embarking on the same journey that I am to make sure that they have someone to say, well, he's on the same journey I am. He doesn't know anything and he's trying to learn as much as possible. So that's probably why I started the, uh, well, the modular clubhouse, you might say. Nice. Well, I respect that. So um, to be honest, I, um, um, not really an internet person. Uh, yeah, I'm, I have social media to promote Chakmat. I'm using emails and sometimes mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going on website or something. Yeah, I'm using internet, obviously, but I, I, I'm not... Um, it's the first time I'm coming on this course. Mm -hmm. And t um, when I started Eurorack, I started to do in Brussels modular meeting because I also yeah. felt so important. It was important to meet people and, like you said, to share the journey with other people. Back in those days, internet wasn't developed uh, that much that you could organize this kind of event online. So we organize regular meetings, and I think it's important for the community. And what, what I'm seeing over here is some things that were people from the same community hang out together. And I respect this kind of initiative because it, it creates. Uh, I think there is not enough people uh, putting time into the community and I, and I think it's really great when people like you doing videos, doing something like that, taking time. I know the time it can take to, to, uh, <laughs> to run such a project and a lot of people are enjoying it and I think it's very important. So thank you for doing that because yeah, it's obviously something that you're also doing for the community. So kudos wow. for that. Uh, thanks so much, Francois. I do. I, I really appreciate that. You, um, <clears throat> you caught me. Uh, I'm a bit lost for words for that. No, no. Thanks so much. And I, I do it out of, out of love and out of uh, pure passion. I might say. Um, we can feel that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that being said, well, I, um, yeah. Just let let us 
change gears. So this is typically the time where we um, open it up to anyone in the audience that has joined live and uh, feel free to r raise your hand and um, join us on stage if you've got any questions uh, either for, uh, for Francois or for me. And if you're um, in a noisy surroundings or if you're unable to, uh, to join us on stage but you do have a question, just post them in the companion channel. So, um, okay, regarding the metal bands, picks or didn't happen. I'll have a look at that, uh, Tom. I might have something here. No, but don't you worry. I didn't do anything in regards of corpse paint or anything like that. No, I wasn't that kind of guy. Which air? Long air? Uh, not even that. No, I was the. Uh, I was. I was a bit different like that. So let's see if I can find something. <laughs> Ah, oh, I'll uh, I'll make sure to have that. Uh, but in the meantime, feel free to uh, raise your hands to, uh, to join us on stage. Do I see any raised hands? Not yet. Which is always always a bit of a bummer when people don't say, "Oh, I'm going to join you on stage." <laughs> so no pressure there whatsoever. Or just paste your questions in the. Uh... Let's see what do we have here. Oh, this is like 40 kilos ago, probably. Hmm. That's not the best thing there. So I might, where am I? Well, yeah, that, that this might be something where people say, well, you do recognize me. Let's see. I might, might have found something. Maybe this is something. No, 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 I'm not gonna. I'm going to put it in the companion channel. This is always nice. So this is not me in a metal band, but it leaves me as a DJ. So you might recognize a bit of the heavy metal approach there. I am, I'm keeping, I'm looking for anything I might, might have found here. There you go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, no questions there. Still no questions, people. Why are we so... I can now uh, guarantee that Francois doesn't bite, so feel free to just raise your hand. And if you, even if you just want to say, well, um, yo, you've done, you've done a great job, or just give him compliments, that's also something you can do. That's not, that's not, that you can always do that. <laughs> but please don't be shy if I can find anything well you'll um, I've got one great question uh, one great picture somewhere I'm gonna look into that and I'm gonna share that later on but for now I think we uh, <laughs> I won't be sharing any other of these uh... <laughs> okay well that that's a great piece of uh, feedback so uh, Cho Cha Cho apologies if I butchered your name uh, just want to say Cha -cho. yeah Great fucking instruction manuals. That is absolutely true. I do have to 100% agree with that. When I, I was introducing the team earlier, I, I um, didn't understand time to, I was speaking about people uh, working in R&D. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so Steve, who did the shack mat with me, uh, uh, is a guy who is doing face plates, the graphics, uh, and so on. And so he's a guy in charge of making Fucking instruction manuals, uh, and I say fucking instruction manuals because uh, at the first time of Shackmat it was kind of a, um, yeah, a bit of a fight between us. You know, ten years ago <laughs> uh, we received a, 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 a make noise module. Uh, me, I'm an engineer. This guy is a graphist, so we don't have the same vision on uh, how a module should be packaged. For me, a module mm -hmm. was just a piece of hardware you put in your rack and you're happy to play music with. And the fact that it's arrived in a fancy box or not, I really don't care. <laughs> yeah, but it was like it, it was a lot, and uh, it was so much that it, it, it took like one week to do the first building guide. Uh, and I don't know if anyone listening is. Uh, uh, doing the DIY shackmat models, but uh, building guide, you know, is doing all the stuff in 3D. Uh, back in the moment that we didn't have 3D to work with Eagle and this kind of thing, so he redid everything. Uh, it was taking so much time, and I think we intended also to make 
15, 20 kits at a certain times. And yeah, if there is support, maybe we will receive 15 emails or 20 emails if everything goes wrong. Yeah. But no, I know we sold a lot more of those kits. I'm really happy to have this guy working and making great documents, clear documents possible. It was the same also for user manual. When you receive a make noise manual back uh, five, six, seven years ago, it was just like a A4 paper just folded with yeah. a two instructions on it and that's it and for me what is normal i i wasn't really just understanding i mean for for a model you want to do a manual fold it like with a real impression with a picture on it i i, I oh, okay and uh, no i totally realized like my i realized it's in years since years but yeah no i realized the importance of such a, yeah. a job i'm happy when people are pointing it and saying uh, uh, the instruction manuals are great because there is a a lot of time and effort he put in doing this and trying to make the things uh, the more understandable possible. Yeah, and and just to, to add to that, what I always enjoy about the the manuals is the artwork that you uh, that you include the uh, typically pre Renaissance uh, imagery or at least some of these well uh, court drawings. I, I always appreciate that because it does add to the overall brand experience of Shakmat, I would say. Um, again, it's when we see the picture, uh, it's something like with the name. When we see the picture, it's like, is it Shakmat? Is yeah, it's Shakmat. Okay, so we, we can, we can, we can use this picture to yeah. to make the manual. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a very um, a blurry period of time between. Middle age, but not too much, and Renaissance, but not too much. Between those two periods, that yeah, yeah. Is for us, but yeah. <laughs> but really it's all it, it it all adds to that. Uh, as I said, it's all a brand experience. It's all about you immediately recognize this as being something that has come from Shakmat, and there's no doubt about it. Uh, and that's also what uh, what Kyle from Signal Sounds now says. Uh, I think one of the oh, reasons right. that Shakma is popular is because they have a unique style. The naming, the panels, including including chess pieces with some modules, they stand out in the market. And I think that that is okay. that's great feedback. And uh, Cho Chachu, now I know how to pronounce it, um, uh, says, well, your one new line is exciting. Have you thought about doing any more of those? Um... Not right now. Yeah, we have one in the we have one in the plants. Uh, it's again also the problem to start projects that we need uh, to have all the pieces to start the project. Uh, it could go with why buying more components for the models to add uh, just a component to 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 make this uh, another one new module. Uh, <clears throat> we have we have still in mind. Um, we have also um, yeah we have also other ideas but it's yeah, one, making one new is a bit complicated it's like a market in the market yeah <laughs> in this market and then you've got the intelligel pub logic and so you've got yeah, the market yeah, in a I market think... in a market yeah exactly so it's it, it, it's a bit complicated and um, we know also intelligel covered a lot of functions. Uh, still have ideas also we feel like the one new uh, with IDs, but uh, like control IDs, and the thing is, it's a bit tricky because the one new line in most of the rack are in the middle or in the up position, and we really love, we would really love to see cases with the one new uh, at the back, and that people get used to that because uh, there we, we would have like a control surface, so this kind of thing would be awesome. Yeah. The, the, the trick also with one new is to make a. Uh, as dense module, something that you could, how do you justify to put a module in one U? It's also the question we have. Mm -hmm. Like for the Tessity Ratello, you have so little thing and you need a big knobs. Yeah. It makes sense to make a one U module. But for a lot of models, we end up very often to say, yeah, but in three U version, you have a so small module and in one U it's so big. Yeah. That yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It's not. Uh, it's, it's not that. It's not that simple. To that it makes really sense in one you. So no, that that's makes why sense, uh, yeah. um, there is some uh, like a cross fader would be awesome. But a cross fader, if you put it in the middle of the rack, I'm not sure about it. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's why I was talking about having a run you row in front of you. Maybe if you have a, 
uh, like, like shack mat models, like a four bricks and uh, Harlequins, you know, with a controlled surface. We would, we would love to develop a full strip with a different element that you can put in front of those models. But uh, yeah, no case that exists like that. And we have a lot of projects with a small team. So yeah. we have to make choices sometimes. And you need to make choices as well, where you say, okay, well, how do you make sure that anything that you do indeed release does adhere to that same um attention to detail the same attention to well brand experience but also the same attention to quality as well so you do you will need to make ch make choices here and there so i do see that we have uh, uh, someone raising their hands balance spring feel free to uh, join us on stage you might need to accept the invite and otherwise in the meantime uh, some feedback from Tom. The limited edition Shackmat Superboot posters were very nice as well. A few words about the, the poster. Um, you know, uh, strongly linked to the. Um, to the uh, sorry, I have a strange feedback with the sound. No, that was a uh, balanced spring. He was uh, just breaking okay. up a bit. But yeah, please continue. Uh um, so we, we have um, a strong link with the artistic scene in Brussels over here and we have also for music but also with visual arts and uh, we decided every year to release a, a poster um, like, like uh, and also stickers because I think a lot of people who bought Shackmat models this year received the stickers with the same picture. Um, so from local artists which we, we really love which are usually making uh, album covers or paintings or or different uh, aspects of the art, like numeric art. And uh, yeah, so each each year we're collaborating with different artists you now to to add uh, another image of Shackmat and a more open that what we have on our manual, like the expression of uh, what Shackmat mean, really means. It's a dead king. So that's why the two first pictures we had are, are simply dead kings. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I saw that. And do you have those images on your website somewhere or? Is that all? Um, in... There's been on the Instagram, you can find them, uh, but we should have them more on the website, start a, a page with a, uh, what will relate to our artistic project and, and so on. Um, that would be great, absolutely. Yeah. We, we should, we should. And then we started some collaboration also. Um, you know, we, we released Quadraphonic Models uh, two years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we created racks that can, and um, it's an official invitation to anyone. Um, if you have um, a project that they have to go in a quadraphonic environment, like uh, maybe a venue or it can be uh, for an exhibition or for a performance or anything, uh, we can associate with you by providing a specialization rack. So um, just hit us, send us an email and uh, we can talk about it. So right now it is in... Uh, uh, Le Frenois, which is an American art center in France, um, where an artist uh, is now developing uh, an exhibition with a quadraphonic, different quadraphonic broadcasting in the room, and so he's using the Aeolus for that. But yeah, when the when this case is back at UHQ, it's free to go for another performance. So if anyone is happy to join the quadraphonic experience and want to experiment with this rack, it's let's talk about it. That's a great. That's a great challenge. Absolutely. Um, so now we are joined by Balance Spring. Uh, please feel free to unmute yourself if you are. Oh, you are breaking up a bit, Balance Spring. I'm. I'm truly sorry, Balance Spring. I think uh, the connection is not um, well uh, stable enough uh, to hear you. Uh, it's just breaking up. Uh, please feel free to just ask your question in the uh, in the companion channel. That will be uh, that will be okay. Um, let's see what else do we have there. So we did that see, writing. yeah. So we did see that uh, uh, Tom has already signed off, and he'll uh, yeah, bye bye Tom. He's gonna head off to bed. I got some feedback from him after our uh, last uh, meeting that he said he felt hang hung over, even though he hadn't had anything to drink. Uh, Thomas from uh, from Xor, I would love to own Checkmat modules one day. That's an insider. So that's oh course, Thomas, uh, <laughs> you know I owe you. Actually, 
if you made your choice, just go for it. Everything <laughs> and, we all use and again, thanks. By, so this guy, uh, I was at a show like three months ago, and um, I have this awesome nerd stick to play live. Um, and uh, I never use the small offset switch of the, of the nerd stick, and uh, I'm not unfortunately the kind of guy which read the manual the full manual before using a module <laughs> so anyway I, I go to the show and it's very rushy and we have to do something very quick because all the tech crew is uh, late and blah 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 and uh, uh, when I'm setting up it's like 10 minutes and I'm the sun check is down and there I'm lighting up the thing just starting my few sequences and no CV at all and I was like oh what the fuck happened so I I, 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 I Finally, ended up on Messenger very quickly with Thomas. Hey, Thomas, it's not working, and uh, and uh, what should I do? Uh, and start to 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 to, to just uh, debug the thing when he just realized. But you try the the switch. <laughs> no, why? Because it's not like the CV outputs. By the way, I still don't know what it's doing. I'm so ashamed. And uh, anyway, Thomas, in the random time in the middle of a Saturday afternoon, I know he's a family. I know he's very busy. It just took time to debug the thing, and we finally. Okay, it was just that. So thank you again, Thomas. It was a great, uh, <laughs> great help. <laughs> um, those those uh, are great we... anecdotes. I love those stories. Absolutely. I will just take five minutes more because I have also to go to sleep. It's already a bit late. I'm really sorry for this. No, 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 uh, absolutely. Let's let's wrap up, and that's uh, that. That's a great point there. So, um, but uh, I'm, I'm checking there's a few questions. Um, yeah. Uh, hello, Balance Spring. Too bad we we didn't have time to to yeah we didn't have time to 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 speak together over here. Uh, question is for both of you. What's your current favorite go-to utility module currently? Um, good question. I'm checking my rig uh, right now. Very unpromoted model for me uh, is from Daniel uh, from Livestock Electronics, uh, which is a, a very good model. It's called uh, the Mir, which is like four uh, linear exponential VCAs with um, uh, clipping on the VCAs, which is cool for CV, so you can like uh, get a triangle to trapeze, for example. Um, yeah, there is a unity mixing, inverting, and IM control, and you have four channels in 10 HP, so it can be a bit of distortion, uh, audio VCA, unity mixers, inverter, mm -hmm. and all those functions together. So, yeah, cool. it's a, uh, you know, which one was that? It's, uh, it's a the Mir. The Mir. Mir. Yes. Oh, yeah, the Mir. I'm, I found it here, yeah. Got it. Yeah, it's cheap and it's very, uh, it's very, uh, you, Swiss Army life uh, model for me, a bit like, it's just next to the math I'm checking my rig like right now. And, uh, yeah. yeah. It's a model I for sometimes right now, it's, uh, yeah, very useful. Yeah. Love it. It does remind me a bit of the, um, um, the Buff Jarvis I've got, and that that's one of my favorites. Uh, modules I've got uh, from a uh, utility approach, which is a, uh, a triple multiple with um, with inversion and attenuation. So that's one of my favorites. Otherwise, I would go. I would always go, of course, for the Harlequin's context because that's something I've truly embraced. And otherwise, from a utility perspective, you might even say Pam's new workout. So those three would be in my top three for utilities. Um, that will then, of course, bring us back to the time where we will need to, well, in uh, in unison, thank Francois for joining today. Francois, it's been an honor and a pleasure to have you on this show today. Absolutely, thank you, thank you so course. much. Uh, thanks beaucoup. a lot to you. And I will make sure no Discord is set up. <laughs> we'll yeah, now sure you've got it. Yeah. Yellow more often than the. Uh, Absolutely. On yeah, and, and we've uh, got uh, Thursday, we've got, um, this Thursday we've got, oh, who do we have again? Oh yeah, we've got Pluton, uh, a, a new up and coming uh, Eurorack maker, Pluton uh, will be joining on Thursday. And then next week we will have uh, noise engineering on the, uh, on the meeting as well. So uh, we've got some great uh, meetings to look forward to. Cool, nice. Again, thank you for doing it. Always a pleasure. Chacho, I, I, I just copied the Wikipedia link. I cannot check it right now, but I will for sure. Uh, uh, anyone, if you want to keep on a discussion or anything, uh, feel free to drop an email and uh, info at shakmatmodera.com. Uh, 
uh, we'll be happy to continue chatting and saying, uh, yeah, I don't know, sharing ideas. Jesper, again, thank you. I really have Always to Always a pleasure. Sorry. Yeah, you have to Always go. Always a pleasure. Always. Bye always. Bye. We'll talk soon. <laughs> so anyone <laughs> who's <laughs> still... Uh, bye bye. Cheers. Sleep tight. So anyone who's still listening, thank you so much uh, for either joining live or listen to this recording. This has been another presentation of the Modular Clubhouse, um, which is a combination of a community on Discord and a YouTube channel where we both, well, investigate sound production, music production, synthesizers, synthesis, but most importantly, we're diving into Modular and Eurorack. Um, if you've got any questions, any pieces of feedback, any suggestions, please feel free to um, well, drop me a line at jesper at themodularclubhouse.nl uh, or join Discord or just leave a comment below the uh, the recording you're listening to right now. Um, based on your feedback, this channel, this community can grow. Make sure that you uh, well, just join. Join into the conversation and um, for now, we'll just say, please, everyone, stay safe, stay healthy. We're in the home stretch in this whole COVID situation. So uh, make sure that you uh, join us for our next meetings on Thursday and on Tuesday. Cheers. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.